<laughs> I got the, the granddaddy walk. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up Experience Podcast Edition. Today, we have the pleasure of pulling up to Mr. Julius Cartwright of Dream Team Realty. We'll be going over all things real estate, his progression in the real estate game, and how he's been able to put his cell phone, but more importantly, put everybody else in his mm. uh, vicinity on. So the whole thing we do is network elevation, and he is the prime example of how that works and continues to sustain for both himself and others and just our community in general when it comes to Cleveland um, and building people who look like us, right? Um, so stay tuned because you're going to love this one. I want to start us off, right? Because not only uh, do I have the pleasure of I actually interview my mentor, you know, because Julie, I, I, if you guys don't know, I am an agent here at Dream Team, Rosie, and it is a pleasure tonight to be able to grill you, you know, <laughs> it really is. But I, 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 I want to, one, I want to give you your flowers while I can and thank you for once again, and times where I didn't believe in myself as far as when it came to real estate or just overall, you would have wanted to, you know, pull me out of that. So I want to tell you, I appreciate it and thank you for that. Thank you. And, um, and I just, we can get right into it, because uh, I know your story, but I don't think the people know your story, right? And I want you to start from the beginning. How did you get started at real estate? Where, where, did, where did this all begin? Well, Give first, us the game. Yeah, uh, well, first and foremost, I wanted just to express to your audience, I appreciate being on the pull-up, but I did not write any of them a check for these endorsements. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're giving me super He's been love. kind of with me, though. You super know? love. <laughs> <laughs> but I am the best you can see for free, so I just want to express that up. <laughs> Off the top. So, uh, I, I got into real estate, you know, I was uh, going to community college, just painting houses. I was about 19 years old. I said, you know, people are going to always need to be in real estate. They're going to mm -hmm. rent something, own something, be a landlord. I need to look at that because that's going to kind of recession proof, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to community college, took the courses, eventually got my license, got licensed at 22 officially kicked off my my career at uh, my, cause my birthday is December 31st so I kicked Caps. it off in January Caps. Capricorn yeah <laughs> all about the Benjamins Caps. that's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. absolutely so I, I kicked <laughs> she's around up all the time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I I I I <laughs> okay okay well that's good that's good I like the energy <laughs> so I got into real estate got my license and and started launching my career in sales and uh I've been blessed. I've been doing this 34 years full time and I haven't punched the time clock and uh, I've been able to build all of my other businesses as a result of selling real estate. Mm. Okay. You know, so I started selling real estate for the first uh, six, seven years and I got my broker's license, became a broker, but I stayed with the broker that I started with and then I started getting into rehabs and then mm. eventually I got a line of credit with one of the banks. Um, and I started rehabbing houses, buying and mm -hmm. renovating them. We didn't call it flipping back then, but a flip <laughs> was when you didn't do nothing to a house. A rehab was when you renovated it. Uh -huh. And so now they call it all flips, so you can't tell one way or another just because of the way they mm -hmm. coined the expression. Mm -hmm. And so I've done a, over 400 rehabs lifetime, you know, bought and wow. sold over 400 houses. Wow, so, so I've had the whole experience from management to being a landlord to buying and selling, you name it. Mm -hmm. The only piece that's missing is new construction, and that's the next next piece on the horizon. Oh, sure. I want to be a builder. That's, yeah. hey, that's what I'm talking about. And and what, what, once again, guys, if you guys think I'm a great marketer, this is the master right here. This is where I get all the plays, where I get all my game from. <laughs> and I know what Julius was showed the other day. Uh, oh, so tell, so tell, tell us how back in the day people used to market before social media, because you were telling us, here at the brothers, but I want them, everyone to know how you used to get down. Now you're making me date myself. No, listen. Right. You want me to be a 56 year old man? No. I'm supposed to be on a pull up. That's what this is. No, listen. I know. Now you're know. pulling me up in the ages. You know, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I was, I, I, for me, it was the fact that you were outside the box with your marketing. But even back then, you were, you, you are ahead of your time before anyone else was. So I know even yeah. now you are. So. Yeah, back in the days before email, we did newsletters, we mailed, people was putting the photos on the envelopes, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. postcards. And we do some of the things that people do now. We did buses, billboard, radio, TV, stuff like that to mm -hmm. kind of market ourselves. But we was always cutting edge, and we had a newsletter that we started that eventually evolved into my first magazine, which was um, 
uh, a home magazine that we distributed at all the supermarkets. Still, we're not in the digital age fully yet, mm -hmm. where everything's electronic now. These magazines that are that are sitting here before you, electronic, both Equity Movement and House Notes magazine. Which, by the way, I'm on the cover up, by the way, guys. You see but, that, the handsome young man right there. That's but yeah, yeah. So we did all kind of marketing <laughs> stuff like. Uh, Stand outside the supermarket, catching people coming out the door and giving them a car. And <laughs> we go through the drive and giving them a car. We had a street <laughs> team, so we was out there doing all the all the marketing. And one guy said, Cartwright, why you just got to give people so much information, man? <laughs> I said, we just marketing. It's paper, so we just yeah. put it out there. I like the like how you guys were at the beauty shows before. You know, you know how you guys go inside. He see the Horizon before Horizon. Julius had his has his stuff in there. Had his stuff in there also, guys. And I and like I said, I know for you. I can bounce ideas for marketing off of you because your 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 mindset is yeah. ahead of its time. Always has been. So I appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. So can we? Because I feel like that was a great segue. Can we get into House Notes at Equity Magazine? Sure, sure. Well, well let's talk about House Notes first. So House Notes, we have a uh, House Notes magazine. That's a magazine that is. We just started it, so we're we're going into our third issue. It's a quarterly magazine. It's digital, so it comes out on the flip, and mm -hmm. we also print copies. And we have House Notes TV, which is headed up by his cousin. She's the she's the TV show host, Stephanie Gates. So, so shout out Stephanie, by the yeah, way. Yeah, shout out to you, Stephanie. <laughs> and uh, so that was kind of birthed out of a need to promote Dream Team, <clears throat> so we could promote Dream Team differently. Now, the equity movement is kind of a big broadband piece. It's more of a financial wellness movement. And it's distributed nationally to a couple hundred thousand people digitally. And uh, so people wanted to advertise. And it's kind of hard to promote your local real estate company when you got literature going to Houston and Vegas and mm. California, unless you try to sell investment properties. But the average person that's looking to become a homeowner, we couldn't reach them. And that's why we went to House Notes. But the equity movement and, and House Notes and Dream Team all really are interrelated, even though they're separate publications, separate venues, interrelated in that the equity movement, the word equity, we kind of replace, use that to replace the word wealth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, equity is basically assets over liability equal your net worth, which is basically your equity and or your wealth. Mm -hmm. So the equity movement is a financial wellness movement where we kind of work to be like sort of the... Uh, I would say the Amazon of financial awareness because mm -hmm. Amazon doesn't sell any products. They're more of a distribution center mm -hmm. and that's what we are. And then and when the members join, because it's a consumer-based organization, they're able to select the th areas that they need help with. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we're sort of like the Uber of yeah. financial wellness in that's that good. people can direct their way to what they need. So we have 15 different resources. I see you smiling over there. Uh, you know, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 15 yeah. different like, resources. Wow. So we got credit. Budgeting, savings, retirement, those are the first set. Then we have crypto, which is a hot, hot commodity right now. Uh, stocks, college debt reduction, insurance, home ownership, uh, real estate investing, investment clubs, uh, evolving entrepreneurs. That's basically you guys, the young, younger generation that's evolving as entrepreneurs, which I know you like because you're in the business piece. Um, and then we have um, women acquiring assets, which I know all the women like that piece. Um, shout out to y'all, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to the women acquiring <laughs> assets. And then we added diversity, equity, and inclusion, and then business development. So whether you're on welfare or you're a millionaire, we got something for you to mm -hmm. choose. Right. And then you just Sounds select right. what you want, and you get the help in that particular area, mm -hmm. or that discipline where you want to improve yourself. So if it's credit, or if it's crypto, I got a house, I'm, I'm good with my money, I got my retirement, I got my insurances in place, I want to learn more about cryptocurrencies and understanding that. Then that's what we kind of help you in that regard. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And the magazine is just a vehicle. Okay, so a lot of people look at the magazine and be like, oh, whoa, the, yeah, your magazine. I'm like, yeah, but the magazine is really, you know, it's really the thing to get me to the airport. Mm -hmm. The real move is I'm getting on the plane going to L.A. Yeah. That's the destination. So the destination is to get you to improve your financial situation on whatever level that is. Mm -hmm. And too often... People have the wrong assumption. If I'm fifteen thousand dollars in debt, and I pay off a credit card, and I go to fourteen five in debt, or I go to fourteen thousand, 
that's a good place for a hand clap because now mm. that is progression. That's progress. Yeah. And so instead of pouting about the fact that I'm still, I got $14,000 worth of debt out here, I just reduced my debt by $1,000. Right. That's a victory, mm. no matter how you look at it. And we don't look at it properly when we start to look at getting our net worth, particularly as African-American people, because mm -hmm. one of the reasons I started it, because I actually president of an African-American trade association called NARAB, N-A-R-E-B, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which is the oldest, largest African-American real estate trade association in the United States. We have over 100 chapters, started in 1947. So I was the 27th president, 2011 to 2013, and I uh, commissioned the first report on the state of housing in black America. And uh, during that time period, and this is going to be devastating information for you guys, even your listeners. The average net worth, if you put us all together, the ones that didn't own a home, blacks, was $1,000. The average net worth of all of us back then, which was probably about, mm, about 8 to 10 years ago, was $4,900. Today, it's right around 14000 15000 for blacks. We're trailing the Hispanics and obviously our uh, Asians and our white counterparts where their average net worth for Caucasians is about 74,000. So this whole home ownership piece is so pivotal. And you know, it's, it's about being a real estate professional and helping people get houses, but it's really about the plight of our people. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because in 1968, after Dr. King's assassination, they signed the Fair Housing Act mm -hmm. in place. In 2018 was 40 year celebration of the Fair Housing Act. And right. you would think over 40 years, oh, we should have really expanded. We should have made major progress in what we did. Right. Black home ownership was 40% in 1968. In 2018, in April, it was 40%. Man, no. Yeah, so 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 it really it really mm. did not change. It went up during Bush's administration. It got up to almost forty nine percent. But then the foreclosure crisis came. That's mm. because we had subprime lending, and that was a falsehood in terms of getting us there mm. because it wasn't sustainable. Right. With with those mm -hmm. type of loans that we had, you look like you had a comment. You was gonna say something. I was. Okay. I was gonna say um, because I've I've always seemed to go back to that period mm -hmm. because I felt like the black family was strong and that yes. we did have strong households and own houses. Did. But I didn't know the statistics of that, yes. especially that we haven't moved. But I do know that we were really strong back then and we, you know, owned homes and we, you know, it made it our business to try to own a piece of something. Absolutely, absolutely. And and in some instances we've gotten away from that. That's why the equity movement focuses on four generations. So we're focusing on Gen Z, that's 7 to 23, the millennials. We all know that. Gen X, which is my generation, and the baby boomers. But to really get a movement going, it's typically started by young people, right? Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, whatever, any movement. I mean, you got the Mother Teresa's and you got Nelson Mandela's that were older when they started. But most of the movements were started by young people, which is where our focus is on you know, Gen Z and millennials, because millennials are at the forefront of being homeowners. But by the year 2025, the Gen Z is going to e eclipse them as the number one homeowner. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so they have a different approach. they not knocking millennials, but some millennials still choose to stay home. Some don't want to get, get buy a house right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we encourage them to buy a property, even if you think you may get transferred out of Cleveland or you may get transferred out of you know, uh, an expensive area where you can't afford to live, like San Francisco, you can't afford to buy. But I sold a young guy, 27 years old, that worked for Pinterest, and he bought here. He bought rental property here. So you can still buy rental property. You don't have to really reside in that city, but invest in real estate is what we're trying to encourage yeah. the millennial group to do, as well as the Gen Z coming behind them. So. That's some of the importance of what we're trying to do and why we're focusing with the equity movement on those different generations. And when I said in the beginning, they're kind of intertwined because we want to prepare people for home ownership. And when we prepare them in Cleveland, we will help them get into a home. If they're in another market, we can refer them to somebody else in that particular market to assist them. 
Let's talk about that, that you brought that okay. up because you said you sold um, a young man who lives out of state uh, property mm -hmm. here. And I know we've all had the phone calls and the <laughs> texts and the mail and the mm -hmm. let me buy your house, let me buy your house. Um, wh what do you see? And, I, and I've asked and I have family in other states and they're saying that it's happening there as well. It's, it's everywhere. Yes. It's like so what, what's going on with that? What's, what's, what's well, going? it really started after the real estate market crashed. Mm -hmm. um, people started buying properties because America was on sale with a for sale sign in front of it mm -hmm. because everything dropped. I mean, there was a time in 2000 when the market fell in 2009 or 10, there were like 40 houses on each side of Cleveland, northeast, southeast, there were $2,000. People were buying houses for $2,000. Yeah, there were, there yeah. were We were too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would have been I was young. an appraiser, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there were, well, there were right? properties in Lakewood for thirty-five to $40,000. And, you know, everything in Lakewood was one sixty-five, two hundred thousand. dollars $200,000. So everything just dropped down. What happened is, and I'm going to be very uh, honest in saying this, the same some of the same players mm -hmm. that caused the crisis, mm -hmm. the people oh, yeah. on Wall Street, yeah. Oh, yeah. they got back in the game eventually, and they started getting back in the game in 14 and 15. So you had hedge funds come in here, buying up property, NPLs, which is non-performing loans. That's a, that's a loan that I have on my house as an example, and I'm behind, I'm delinquent in it. And they could sell my mortgage and they wouldn't have to foreclose on me. And then, it would be up to the person that bought my mortgage to let me stay in there, to restructure my mortgage, or to foreclose on me. So they bought a lot of what they call toxic or distressed assets mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. And so they bought up a bunch of properties, and BlackRock was one of the companies that did it, and they sold this portfolio maybe a year or two ago for like $7.1 billion profit. Wow. Yeah, and they, so you got a lot of hedge funds, number one, buying the property. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing that's, whole wholesaling or out of state investing or virtual wholesaling. You got people from San Diego and yeah. people buying properties here and wholesaling them mm -hmm. and they're doing it everywhere. You can take the smallest city in the United States. I don't care if it's in Alabama or Tennessee or somewhere in Michigan, people are soliciting people for wholesaling. And it's gotten so aggressive that you it becomes annoying. When you mm -hmm. go to the mailbox, you got mm -hmm. stuff in the mail if you own a piece of property. Mm -hmm. You getting these phone calls? Would you like to sell your property? Because they're skip tracing, they're tracking people down, and that's another reason why I think it's so important for people to get in the game now. Because Cleveland prices are on the rise. Now, I'm not talking about the West Side. West Side is strong, strong prices. I'm talking about the e inner city, East Side, mm -hmm. and even the inner ring suburbs are starting. The prices have increased drastically, drastically. in the last five years. Oh yeah, and it's no sign of stopping anytime on. soon mm -hmm. because of the shortage of inventory. So it's supply and demand. So prices are going to continue to rise. And because rates are so low, it's affordable, but it's anticipated that interest rates may go up and it puts our people further out of reach from being mm -hmm. able to actually yes. own. So yes. it is a, yes. it is an urgent matter that, you know, that we need to step up to the table and get ourselves in a position to own a home or at least attempt. I'll give you another example. I sold a young couple property that they was lease purchasing. They were paying eight fifty. dollars They ended up buying the property and their note with taxes, insurance, and everything included was four hundred dollars. So the average person renting for <laughs> the average person renting for seven hundred, eight hundred, or if you're in the suburbs and you rent for a thousand to fifteen hundred, you could own that property probably cheaper than what you're paying for rent in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But but if you're not positioned, then you're regulated to say, I have to be a renter yeah. and I have to pay this mm -hmm. rent. And so there's a cost associated because maybe I was irresponsible or maybe I didn't have the knowledge of what I needed to know about my credit mm -hmm. or maybe I didn't handle my money right, but it's never too late to correct either of those situations. So Or maybe my job has been unstable and I haven't been able to position myself. But need to position yourself and work towards positioning yourself to be able to buy. Mm. One last question about that. One last question about that. You had touched on the fact that, you know, these um, buyers are buying up houses. And I noticed that a lot of the houses are being bought cash. 
Mm -hmm. um, and they're being bought. So like I have a nurses uh, that work in the hospital. So where when things first started, they, they got the calls or they decided, okay, we want to upgrade and they sold their house for a hell of a profit, mm -hmm. but they're living with their mom or they're renting or they're staying in a hotel because the inventory is not there for them to get it. My question is, because you have people buying cash constantly, my mm. question is this, do you see, do you foresee some type of issue like when the housing crash happened from all of these houses being per purchased? Like I'm getting offered $100,000 over what my house is. Well, you bring up a very good point because a lot of people think about the the market being overheated and all that. So first thing you got to understand is all real estate is local. So real estate, what's happening in Los Angeles mm -hmm. is substantially different from Cleveland. What's happening in Denver or what may be happening in Houston is different from what is you know happening in San Diego. So each of the markets are different. So Cleveland was so low with our valuations yeah. that we're in a lot of cases in the inner city, we're just getting back to where close to where valuations were. And we're not even at where valuations were before that, the the, before the crash. So okay. I'll give you a classic example. Okay. I sense. sold a guy a house, <clears throat> the same guy that lives in uh, San Francisco, sold him a house and he paid, he was in about $55,000 for a two family. So he wanted comps. I want to make sure I'm not overpaying. Well, I just went back to 1999. This house sold for for 100 grand. Wait, cause I don't know I know Keto know what comps is. So let's play with comps hard real quick. No, 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 it's cool, it's cool. Yeah. And some of your audience may not. Right, right, right. So I do understand. No, no, man, don't, don't throw a dog in that race like that. Like, you know, can't just go in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that means if it's a two family, it has to be compared to a two family mm -hmm. within a one mile radius that's sold within the last six months. Mm -hmm. So this property that he was concerned about that he bought in 2021, 20, 21 years ago, it sold for 100. So I'm saying, man, you buying it for 55. Right. Don't you think it went somewhere in, in that time period? So it's, you, you're already getting a deal. You can't right. expect to get it. How much lower do you want to get it for? Because right. it's already priced right. And that's a that's a classic example. Now that property's probably worth 69 nine to 74.9. Nine, and that's been in six months because mm -hmm. the area is starting to stabilize itself. And some of the reason is, to your point, Everybody's buying cash, so everybody's buying everything at a discount. Mm -hmm. So if she goes to get a mortgage and she has to finance, she may not get it at that price. Right. But it's still a good price, and so now the price starts to set at a higher, it, it resets itself at a higher number. So that's that's one part of it. The other thing is that other those mortgages we were getting before, no income, no assets, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah the credit. I mean, yeah. if you had a 700 credit score, you could buy 10 houses with no money down. I mean, that was a recipe for disaster. People yeah, had 10, 11 percent. So that's not the case now. These loans are being vetted. They're legitimate loans. They're not just putting anybody in a house. And then the seller could credit the money and do what they call a seller carry back. And, you know, he could have a 580 credit score and I could give him 20 percent on the second mortgage. And he come up with 5% of his own money. And it was so much creative, yes. bad paper out yes. there. That's not, most of it's cash. Mm -hmm. So you can't crash with a cash market. Because yeah. if people don't want to sell, or they'll just wait it out. Mm -hmm. But the values are going up. So it's not mortgage. The first, the crash we had was based mortgage related. This robust thing we're dealing with now is dealing with cash. And to the point about people buying here, I had a, one of my Asian investors say to me, um, 40, 50,000, that's a weekend for my friends in Silicon Valley. But 40, 50,000 gets your house here. Get your house here, right. See what I'm saying? So that's no money for them. Or at that time, it was maybe 30, 35,000. But that's not any money for them to put out 30, 35,000. It's a lot of money for us 
in this market to go out and, yeah. I mean, how many thirty to fifty thousand dollar cash houses can one buy mm -hmm. that's already in this market unless they in flux with cash or they got a self directed retirement where they can take their retirement money and use it to buy and invest it. But the average person is not laying around with the money. But you have people in California yeah. and and in Portland, Oregon, and people on the West Coast mm -hmm. where they sell something and they got this appreciation and they have a hundred. Like I got another investor say, hey, I got $1.3 million, 1031 exchange, so he can come here and buy a lot with $1.3 million mm -hmm. that he has to place on another property so he doesn't have to pay taxes. Right. We just haven't had that great appreciation mm -hmm. in a lot of inner city markets. So anyway, Thank I don't want to... breaking that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't want to make sure I entertain the questions and not talk. Cause I got no, you, you no, was, I really needed to... Know that I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> 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 well, they'll kill you with these, uh, especially the yellow mailers. God, please. So, when it comes to positioning, you do a great job of making sure your team is educated enough to educate the potential buyers or sellers of the full process from saying, I got an idea that this house might be worth something to actually getting to the closing table and completing it. Because a lot of people think just because we got paperwork started, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go buy this car, I'm about to kind of just right. do some other stuff and kind of almost throw a monkey wrench in the plan. But your team does a great um, deal of actually sitting with their clients, working with them, from like almost hand-holding. That's right. Not even almost, so for that, sure, hand-holding. Yeah. And then y'all throw Brandon in the mix, you know, somehow. <laughs> but no. He let, he let go of the hand <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I, I, I want to say this to everyone. I'll never forget we were in class. I remember Julius put this in my head and stuck in my head ever since he said it. He said, one, all the agents are looking for that perfect client, right? They're all running for that person who got the, the 700 credit score, I guess. He said, what about the agent that's going to people who don't have a credit score necessarily, don't have the down payment? Those are the, that, that's a bigger market for that. That's, that's, that's a niche that you can go out there and, and, and kill it. And I promise you, when he said that, that just blew my mind because now... I, that's that, that's that's where all that's thank you guys because you guys are blowing my phone up because <laughs> the bad credit bring them my way you yeah. ain't got no down payment bring them my way and I'll never forget because I'm like when I, when I came to Asia I thought that was the typical way to go and he's like no go for those ones that the one the the one the agents the the ones like uh they're running from, they're running them. from them. bring them bring them here to me you know what I'm saying I'll never forget that and I want to thank you for that because that yeah changed my because, because everybody wants what's easy exactly and the people that you help like that will be your raving fans oh, they'll yeah. they'll oh, appreciate yeah. you better because you yeah. took me from a situation where I didn't know I can get this mm -hmm. to the promised land where somebody else already knew I had a 730 credit score so you know thanks for helping you get the house mm -hmm. I'm appreciative but it ain't it's a different level when you go from not knowing something to being enlightened and then somebody guides you down that the path. Yeah. And, and, and going back to saying what you saying, well, you, you we you go trying to get a nice place, a nice apartment, a nice house or whatever in Cleveland right now, you are paying at least a thousand dollars. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and then you get a house and you know, I can remember telling a friend the same thing and she was looking at eight fifty nine hundred dollars for a one bedroom yeah. and i was like i think your credit is good enough i think you should check it out she ended up getting a whole four bedroom nice house all um refrigerator stove everything left there a realtor's mother lives there wow mm. 600 wow that 600 a month wow 600 yeah. a month they got the um heaters for the uh the outside when the ice come and all oh, that, they got that put the heater. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Fancy, fancy. Yes, okay. yes. But yeah, yes. And, and, and you got a lot of that, and I'm not knocking anybody for this lifestyle that want to live, work, and play and live downtown because we almost got 20,000 people living down there. Mm -hmm. But our rent is 1200 to like $1,800. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you look at what you're spending for a place downtown and the convenience of being downtown, which is lovely, I love it down there, but that stuff is not for sale. There's a reason why they're renting it because they keeping that 95% occupancy downtown Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may have dropped down now through the pandemic and other things, but it was about a 95% occupancy rate. So nobody wants to build condos when the rents are that good. Why sell when you know you got that steady mm -hmm. stream of income coming in and more people are moving down there and then that takes away from those individuals to be able to buy and own something. And it, it looks good now, 
But, you know, five or 10 years from now, when you paid out $1,200 a, a month and you're out of $14,000 a year, and in five years, that's a, you know, you're out of $70,000. And, you know, mm -hmm. nobody grows up and, and, and progresses through their job and aspire to be a tenant. Mm -hmm. I've never met anybody like that. I want to be a tenant. Well, I've never seen anybody on their deathbed to say, here's son, here's daughter, here's the keys to my apartment. Because you can't. Like, mm. what, what do I want the keys to your apartment? They throw it back at you in the, you're in the hospital. <laughs> they don't want the keys to your apartment. I clean the apartment out and take whatever valuables I see, but they want a house. Yeah. And that's the thing that we haven't done a very good job at, is making sure that we have insurance. So if something happens to one of our loved ones, we can, you know, put them in the ground and, and, and it, purpose of life insurance, which is a whole other topic, is to replace the bread, winner's income, or a portion of it to support the family. Mm -hmm. And then the real estate. What are you leaving me? You know, even the Bible says you, you should leave an inheritance mm -hmm. for your children. So if you own something, you can leave something. But if you don't own anything, or you don't own a house, what can you do? Mm -hmm. So... And even like the generational wealth, like you say, the asset management that comes along with generational wealth and continuing to grow and build, a lot of that comes from the positioning of, hey, let me let me put myself in a position to do this, but not only for myself, but like you say, there's so many generations we got to hit just so the family as a whole, like our whole purpose was to pull up together, to grow together to get all these different entrepreneurs and um, people who look a lot like us, because um, we always claim the resources are not available or people who right. do have the resources kind of want to hold them to themselves. So our whole thing is highlighting those who don't always um, have the same amount of publicity as others, because there are so many people who are selflessly giving it away. Mm -hmm. And I love that you have made your make your mission um, to actually grow not only you and your family but the city in general yes. because it seems like like I say 34 years is a lot you've seen a lot you've been through a lot of different cycles everybody know um, real estate you know as a whole is cyclic but a lot of it comes from the marketing the educational standpoint that people don't want to jump on when it comes to let's make sure you're able to acquire some assets. Let's talk about what to do to manage those assets when you get them. And I love that you actually do that for us, Clevelanders and African-Americans. Yes. Um, so thank you for that because we don't hear it enough. And if we do hear it, for whatever reason, we don't take heed. A lot of times it's too buttoned up and too pretty where it almost seems unattainable. And I love how you come down to our level and break mm -hmm. it all the way down for Brandon. So, <laughs> you bring the cookies down for me. Right, you know what I'm saying? Short exactly. Exactly. You. exactly. <laughs> but um, I think that's a wonderful thing that you continue to do, you continue to build, and you guys have been like just growing Dream Team as a whole. Um, now, if I'm looking to maybe join your team, what is that process like? Because you're an actual broker. Sure. Right? So what's the difference between a broker and an agent? Okay, so before I answer that question, let me go back to something else you were saying about the process. So for the audience and the listeners and, and the team here, the whole process hasn't been like smooth selling either because when the market crashed, my head got cracked too because of what happened with the financial crisis and all that. So there are some ups and downs in real estate, but mm -hmm. the key thing is to keep moving and keep going. So to, to, to talk about what you're saying is the difference between a, a broker and order, the agents work under the broker and I always say I work with Brandon, I don't say Brandon works for me because I feel like we work together as a team. Um, you know, I know we gotta bring him up to a certain level. But <laughs> all the way up. We gotta bring him all the way up. So, you know, so when I sit with Brandon, I know I gotta bring him all the way up. But uh, I feel, I feel like um, that's that's. So you said the difference. So in order for a person to get their license, they have to be sponsored by a broker. Okay. So an agent can't sponsor another agent. You have to be sponsored by a broker. So a broker has to sign you up. But we want to be the company. Believe it or not, and thanks to Brandon, he's already moving us in this direction as a recruitment manager. Yeah, shameless <laughs> plug for him. Yeah, shout out. Come to Dream Team. Brandon. We, <laughs> want, we want to have the company with the most millennials in any other real estate company. And we are, we're moving in that direction in a very aggressive fashion. Because I feel like 
Back in the days, I would have been considered a millennial when I got licensed or, or, mm -hmm. or Gen X and I got licensed at a young age. But I also feel like, um, you know, we had a, one of our other agents that just left. His name is uh, Jordan. He's 19. So I was Jordan, by the way. Yeah, y'all yeah. see him at all of our events, too. He mm -hmm. always comes. Yeah, so he's 19. So if I can pour into him, by the Ooh. time he gets 35, yeah. he can sit with. down. 35 to 40, he should be able to call it quits if he invests nice. and follow the roadmap. Nice. Because I want to pour into people so they don't make the... It's okay to make some mistakes, but you don't have to make mistakes to get that experience to mm -hmm. succeed. Mm -hmm. So if I can pour into him and help him develop then he'll be in a great position 21 years from now when he's 40. Yeah. He should be well off, you know, and well situated and well positioned. So mm -hmm. that's one reason. The other reason why I think that the millennials, why I believe in millennials, and a lot of people say, ah, oh, they don't know what they want to do. They change careers and that's everybody, you know. Right. You know, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you multitasking, being in a variety of businesses because I got a variety of businesses that I'm involved in. So. It doesn't bother me at all, but I think that that's the group that if you could capture them and let them see the value of being a real estate practitioner, I kind of think everybody should have a real estate license. I don't care if you work a job or whatever, nine to five. You, if you can do three to five sales, yeah, all two agents right here. <laughs> right, right. Here's you know, paperwork. Let's get I know them signed up. Two you wise up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see it now. Sure. Yeah. Sit with your keys. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. right. You know, and I can see beneficial agent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coming to you. You know what I'm saying? There you go. That. That's it. So, I, I just think that everybody should have a real estate license because if nothing else, it helps you. You know, you can actually use your commission towards your purchase mm -hmm. when you go to buy. You know. And so, you know, if you if you just use it for that to help you buy a house or and get the knowledge and experience and get on the inside versus being on the outside, I think you already won at that point. Mm -hmm. I um I used to be a residential appraiser. Okay. Um when the housing crash <laughs> happened, I kind of I I went from, you know, making, you know, $450 um for, per appraisal for a two family, 300 for a single family. Yeah. I went from that to driving all the way out to Timbuktu for the banks making $150. Doing a broker price. Appeal. Yes, it yeah. was it was terrible. And it made me say, hey, I'm about to go back to work. I'm mm. going I'm going to a job. This 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 hustle is not for me. Right, right, right. Um so that's one thing that I think about that I'm always like I, I didn't know enough to say, hey, put your license in escrow. I didn't have right. anybody saying to me put your license on escrow so you can have it later. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I regret so much, not having that, because you can always use it. Mm -hmm, um, and going back to what you're saying is you kind of have the inside information on things that are out there. Mm -hmm. You can use your money to purchase. You can find good deals, things like that. So, yeah, I, I see what you're saying about Well, well first it. of all, and that's, and that's good. I mean, everybody had to hit the reset button, especially during that market mm -hmm. time period. But the other thing is, if a person is working a nine to five and they get their real estate license, if they don't own the house, keep the nine to five so you have stable employment because that's one of the mm -hmm. four things you need to buy a house. You need a job, you, you need W2s. credit, and you need down payment, and you're gonna need an appraiser. Mm -hmm. You know, but but on your end, if a person's working, so you already got a job, so you you just get your real estate license, and now you work toward getting yourself in a position to own a home. Yeah. You know, and if you're an entrepreneur, you can basically achieve the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a key way to, to to really do it. But it ain't too late. You still can get back in. The door, you know, the door is still <laughs> open. <laughs> 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 you are the closer. Oh, yeah. 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 This is the closing. I told you, cartwheels for cartwright. They don't play. <laughs> they don't get them on t-shirt. Y'all heard that? I'm getting them t-shirt. The only thing I close is my car doors and refrigerator doors. That's it. That's <laughs> what I close. But uh, I can tell you this: the door been open, even though it's like four degrees outside with wind chill. The door's still open. I already feel the cool breeze coming in right now. So, you know, we're waiting on y'all to get in. Come on back. And man, don't worry, thing. Julius. I'm, I'm going to get them, man. I'm going right, to get them. We're part of the pull-up agency, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all hey, that, that'll be a good thing. This is the pull-up team. Man, Woo, right. man. This is the pull-up team. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. 
don't with the podcast too. Oh my oh, goodness. My <laughs> All right, don't, Julie, don't get me started, man. I see it. I see it. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. That's on our plate. All right, right, right. Even though we got this thing around the corner, it's one I just passed. <laughs> Let's go look at the for sale sign. And right. then I can promote it. The pull up team's doing cartwheels for cart <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen. <laughs> so I got a question. I got a question. And this is philosophical at, at most. Oh, now you becoming a philosopher. Oh, yeah, of course. I got, I got BV because I'm, I'm, I'm. Are you, are you KRS? <laughs> are you KRS one or are you Aristotle? Which <laughs> philosopher? Are you? A little bit of both tonight. Okay. 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 So, okay. so as you know, Cleveland is. <laughs> she's silly. She's silly. She's always mad. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we know Cleveland is an emerging market, right? And like we see the place like East Cleveland. Glenville are getting renovated, right? Yes. So as a as a broker SaaS agent, you see it from their perspective as far as gentrification, right? Mm -hmm. In your opinion, do you see gentrification as a bad thing or do you see gentrification as a as a necessary evil to get us to where we need to be? Good question. So it depends on who you're asking. So 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 I'll flip the script and ask the question. If you're a person that owns a property in the area that's being gentrified, and then you are able to sell and cash out and get a big chunk of money. You say gentrification is the best thing since ice cream. Mm. You know, I'm taking my money to the bank. It allowed me to do A, B, and C, mm. right? Now, if you're a person trying to get in, which we told you to get in at today's prices, but you're going to wait five years from now, then you would say gentrification is a bad thing mm. because now the prices are $75,000 more, and now it's an affordability issue. Mm. So my thing is you can't stop gentrification. You just got to decide to participate mm. because I don't believe in the fact that it's going to happen. It's going to be a natural progression. And the communities you mentioned are going to take off. East Cleveland will re yeah. revitalize yeah. itself. Yeah. It has to. Yeah. It's just automatic. I mean, you know, over, over a 40-year period, neighborhoods go through those four different transitions. Mm. You know what the I mean? Cycle. They go through cycle, like new, uh, like uh, rehab. Then they start to, to decline, and then they decay. And then it all happens all over again. So East mm. Cleveland's at that fourth stage, you know, mm -hmm. on the kickstand, holding it up because, you a know, string. A string. <laughs> right. a string there. Right. You know, you got, you got, more, you got more vacant lots and more vacant properties. Well, they got a, huge houses. Though. I mean, they yes, have mansions. Like, yes. Yes. It's, yes. They it's definitely a potential. Yes. It's, it's a lot happening over there. And I don't know if I would even ride down at night, but <laughs> the, the, what, bare bones is that what they mm -hmm. call it yeah. in real estate yeah like the houses are huge the yeah. rooms are huge so i do believe even the, even the rockefeller mansions in uh east cleveland or right around that chair yeah. you got some you got some real, yeah well he built it so is that Lakeview? Like, no well see it's already Fort happening Hill? it's already happening in forest hill because those are rockefeller houses and okay. that that is being gentrified right now when one of those houses come on the market they're moving instantly and uh, a lot of diversity is going on over there mm -hmm. and so that's doing well mm -hmm. uh it's the lower part of east cleveland and and some of the other parts we got a lot of abandoned buildings and stuff that's not and so i think what's going to happen you'll see a movement from the university circle area expanding and then you have the forest hills area and then somewhere in the middle yeah. you know those areas will correct themselves last mm -hmm. but but you know, the top end close to Cleveland Heights and the bottom end close mm -hmm. to University Circle and Little Italy, it's just surrounded by opportunities. So it's got to it's gotta happen. You want me talking about EC? <laughs> uh, no. And you know what? He brought up a good point, too. I mean, he said the word opportunity, which brought me to opportunity zones, too, because mm -hmm. investing in the right neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you get so many tax yeah. breaks and Absolutely. benefits, too. Yeah. And That's like true. Earn, your assets kind of earn on themselves before they even, before the gentrification starts. So while you're sitting on it, you still not losing. I know she she heard that somewhere else, so you gotta break it down for her. <laughs> What's up to oh, yeah, you real quick. Be <laughs> part of the team, though, y'all. That's okay. We go we go go learn together though. So that's a great question. Right. So the, please break it down. Yeah, so the tax <laughs> the tax law that was passed um designated uh by each governor of each state these different uh opportunity zones allow individuals to invest money into those areas and not pay taxes. On their on their revenue, so the rich is interested in one thing, and that's not paying taxes. Right. That's one reason why they stay rich because they do not pay taxes. So by investing in a in an area the opportunity zone, <laughs> then you have to look at which ones are opportunity zones because people think 
Opportunity Zones is just a, a rough area. Mm -hmm. Well, Tremont is Opportunity Zone. Mm -hmm. Believe yeah, it or not. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, it yeah, was. But, yeah, well, no, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's Opportunity Zone because one of the things that that any governor wants to do is to make sure that those investment dollars are going to sustain seven, ten years from now, mm. fifteen years from now, and of course, Tremont is a no-brainer. You know that's going to sustain based right. on where it is versus maybe an area of you know East Cleveland. Now there are some opportunity opportunity zones in the East Cleveland area, but there's maps that you can go mm. online and pull up and see based on zip code and the census tracts and stuff like that, you'll see where those opportunity zones exist. Interesting. And if you don't know how to look up the map, feel free to reach out to Dream Team Realty. One of the realtors will work with you. They'll sit down, hold your hand, go through the whole idea of what an opportunity zone is, more in depth with what you're trying to invest in, whether you are in or out of state. They will make sure that they walk through the process with you of investing, growing, and building out this portfolio so that you can start getting wealthy like a rich. She good. Like yeah. good. She good. <laughs> Where she get her license? <laughs> I know. Listen, beneficial agent. I can see it. Yeah. Everybody, you get a house. You get a house. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, know, I probably won't even pull up on it when she <laughs> I'm pulling up on the we team. We all going to be here. Yeah, so. We going to be learning how to build our businesses, take the money from the business, funnel it to buy some assets, making sure we pay the kids on the payroll, but also be leaving some stuff on the back end. I got some plans. We're going to work this out off camera because I okay. told y'all. Okay. I got special stuff off camera for y'all. Y'all don't even, y'all do good to get this because it's a lot of information. <laughs> One thing I do want to talk about though, since we're kind of in the middle of, or right, we right on the, not to monopolize the conversation, but we've already hit on opportunity zones. We've already hit on gentrification. What about those neighborhoods that are like halfway there, like a Huff neighborhood or anything mm -hmm. that's around the Cleveland Clinic? You know, they had that huge buyout with a lot of those like 93rd, um, houses and all of, like the hood where we're mm -hmm. all like oh i would never live there or i would never invest there but a lot of people who bought houses for like 500 sold it for like fifteen thousand. and um you know that's when i really got in the idea of real estate is it's a game i guess but it's, it's also <laughs> it's a wealth vehicle yes it is um and how do you feel about like investing in a mixed neighborhood like that where somehow like you might see a mansion and you might see a not Shaked. so great. Yeah. yeah. And yep. you so, gotta figure out the, the band, which one. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you see what what a lot of they call we call infield development where they just do a lot of spot building and stuff like that. And a lot of that took place in Huff and then it didn't they didn't really finish in Huff. Mm -hmm. Uh but Huff has one of the largest landmass next to East Cleveland number one and Huff would be number two. Mm -hmm. So Huff has still has a lot of stuff in that particular community. That that's really wide open. So I would say Huff, uh, Fairfax, and this portion of Glenville that they refer to as Circle North, which is close to University Circle, four four one zero six. That's a hotbed. Those areas there are a lot of things going on in there. A lot of new development. A lot of commercial development. And we're talking millions uh, going into those communities right now, being built. And so it's it's going to really take off. And people are going, they're not going to see it. And we've been talking about opportunity zones, but there's something called Opportunity Corridor, which runs off of mm -hmm. I-77. That's yeah. a $39 million project they had been working on for about 10 years. But now that corridor is open, that allows you to come to right Cleveland off, the, drop right off Cleveland Clinic, University Circle area. Yeah. It's right there. So yeah. it's all positioning itself because you always follow transportation, mm -hmm. where freeway runs and Mm -hmm. That all aligns up with dollars and commerce. Like That's that. why they're building a Myers right there on the corner of 105 and Cedar. Are they? Yes. Oh, you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're building a Myers right there. A lot of people don't know. So if you don't come in the city yeah, because you're in the, you're in the suburbs and stuff like that, and I get it. You don't have any reason nobody's sick. You're not going to Cleveland Clinic. You don't know. But when they put that Myers there, it's over. Yeah. you know, it was a food desert before the end. Exactly. Outside right. of the days on 66 and Huff. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chester rather than the Huff area, so it's wide open. And a lot of these neighborhoods, if I'm not mistaken, because I know I'm not as old as Brandon, you know, <laughs> that's before our time, for real. But um, a lot of these neighborhoods that we're calling out, these are actually like historic neighborhoods. Yes. And so many things have happened, even when it came to like the riots, building, like he had said, strong black families. 
Um, prior to like the, the 80s epidemic when it came to like the drugs or even, and, and I hate to say government programs breaking up different uh, stuff, but like the projects and mm -hmm. child support and all this other type of stuff that came to so-called help, it definitely broke down our fam familial structure mm -hmm. and our asset. Um, like we started like to fall back. Like we didn't want to make too much money because we weren't, uh, we weren't going to qualify for government assistance when it's like right. if we would have stayed on the same path we might would have continued at least to somehow grow instead of staying straight on this uh or not staying straight but we hang back down somehow even though we had our ups we just came down and now we're only leveling out at 40 percent again but a lot of that comes from not knowing our history and if we know the history not taking the necessary steps to position ourselves to overcome it and be better yeah, and but to the home ownership point, it's approaching like back about 43%. So it is starting to increase a little bit. But um, yeah, you're right. Uh, those those areas are, are, are major areas to, to really look at. And oftentimes there's a, a, be very transparent, there's a fear factor of, you know, we moved out of the the neighborhood because we were being in some cases robbed by the neighbors or the jealousy the envious and stuff like that people started moving out and uh and it kind of hurt us because we moved out to the suburbs and then the players are moving in closer so they can be closer to downtown mm -hmm. and that begins the regentrification of the community as they start to move in and we start exiting then it starts to recycle and recircle mm -hmm. itself so this that's where it's so vitally important that we really and truly look at you know trying to lock into these different communities there are a lot of historical components in huff and fairfax and certainly glenville um so it's you have to google it and do your research it's, it's out there once again i'm really happy that you brought up that percentage again um if it's one thing that i know from um, being a black business owner myself and from being on the pull-up experience and, and getting a chance to meet a lot of uh, black young entrepreneurs who are out here, you know, doing big things. And I just want to, um, again, um, put it out there um, about wealth, um, mm -hmm. like you're trying to teach us about, about real estate, you know, it's a lot of um, young people that do have their hands on money and, and that can do things and can buy property. Yes, you drug pharmacists um, come out of <laughs> <laughs> we, street pharmacists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, street no, street and, and, and mm -hmm. that you do want to leave something for your children. You know, we, we all want to leave a legacy and leave something for, for our children and, and uh, make a situation where they don't have to struggle mm -hmm. like we did. So, you know, put that money in the right place. Leave, leave your kids a, a free and clear house. You know, leave them if they don't. If it's not in a great neighborhood, leave them something so they can collect rent. You know, mm -hmm. so that they won't, so they can use it for their house. You know, and uh, that's that's just a really valid point. We do need to uh, redirect our fundings and and do what we need to do for uh, our children and and who's coming behind us. So I just got a great idea. So here's what we need to do. We need to collaborate. The equity movement and the pull up experience. <laughs> collaborates to get a hundred people per month. So by the time we conclude this year, we have 1200 people that the equity movement and the pull up experience come together with this collaboration to help a hundred people per month in whatever, whether they're trying to buy a house, uh -oh. whether they're trying to do business, whatever we need, to, we need, we need to put that I in the category and let's get, let's get that. That way we're making some impact. Yes. Not, not that yes. your podcast is not making it, not that no, dream no, team is, no, but yes. us coming together. Yes. Let's really, yes. let's pull some people up and give them a real experience. Mm -hmm. And then we can come back this time next year and measure our growth and say, these are the people and we can get some shout outs some testimonials. With a champagne and podcast. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sorry. You ain't never lie. You ain't never lie. Pop, pop up Come my favorite. Come on, now, no. Well, 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 you were, you were, you Don't worry about it. I have rosé soon. Don't worry about it. Y'all heard that. You got me still. You got yeah. me still. Yeah, right, right, right. The rosé. No, but I love that. Yeah, I think the collaboration 
That's a part of this. Part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To get the people to yeah, come. We can put some commercials yeah. doing y'all. Y'all pull up podcast and drop them. Uh, is that what we gonna do? Uh, yeah. Pull up on you. Yeah. Definitely gonna skirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I love that. I mean, cause that's a whole. It's literally that's the basis of what why we created this one. Mm-hmm. Right. To disrupt the whole. How can I say this? The uh, <laughs> the uh, hold that Cleveland has that if you're not popping, you're not popular, you really can't move. We're we're actual proof that, you know, when you come together and you collaborate together, yes. you all can win. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I like what y'all doing. Business the whole nine. It's just a beautiful thing. Right, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to people like you. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely because of people absolutely. like you. Absolutely. Because we we can't we just want somebody to interview and we can do among ourselves. Yeah, know? that's good. We we try not to interview Kita. Kita, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know I'm a nut. I ain't I got no problem with admitting it. But no, I I, I love that because we are all over prosperity over popularity because it's right. one thing to have like the likes and the followers and whatever. Right. It's a whole another thing to be in position. And I'm not saying perfection, but at least progression. And again, that's what I feel like even the synergy here, like this, this gelling, what we all about. And we give a lot of information, but what's the information without impact, like you said. Right. So, yeah, I would love to do that. Y'all heard it on camera. Yeah. Do not embarrass me when I start <laughs> sending out the uh, flyer saying, pull up on us. We email y'all. <laughs> Open up email. Pull up on us. Yes, pull up on us, please. Don't. Don't act like y'all didn't see it, because I will pull up on all of y'all. <laughs> do check the comments. No, one thing I, I do want to uh, touch on is that I promise you, anywhere when someone like, who broke you with? Or no, no, no. No, they never ask. They right never ask. You never lie. But as soon as, as soon as they caught right, they already know what time it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I was talking. I was talking to Edith, right? I was talking to Edith the other day, and uh, she's like, "What broke you?" I'm like. I'm like, drink team? Car right? Oh, car right. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, no matter what. They go to cartwheels, man. But yeah. I listen, listen, listen. Right. listen. So you're synonymous. You are synonymous. You're right. So shout out to you, Edith. Yes. Like, Come on to drink team, yes. Edith. Yeah, she next. We're going to get her next. Come on Definitely. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said to say that you have made your name synonymous with real estate in Cleveland. So for all those, and not even for just real estate, but for business owners out there, how do they... How how would you how what recommendation would you give them to make it so that their name reign true in their in their industry or in their field? Well, that's a good good very good question. I think uh, a lot of times we in business and we're thinking about the bottom line and the profit. Mm-hmm. But I was taught from the people who brought me through this business is you give the service and mm-hmm. you take care of the people and the money, everything else will come. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So if you're providing this whatever kind of if you got a service. That you provide, <laughs> or if you, or if you're selling, you know, products, or you got a restaurant, just Whatever. do, just do good business. Mm-hmm. That's it. across the board, and everything Agreed. else will come. Agreed. You know, you'll get the reputation, and you'll get the image. They'll start to associate you with a winning situation because you took care of business. Mm-hmm. But when you all about the money, and mm-hmm. that's first, people can smell that a mile away that mm-hmm. this person is all about trying to sell me something. They really don't have my best interest. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've always tried to do at Dream Team is make sure that we give the service. Mm. And as long as we give the service, they're going to tell somebody else about us and they're going to become raving fans and the rest is history. Yeah, that's somebody's, just like you said, the Dream Team. (laughs) That is your dream, like to own your own home. And it's a a strenuous process by, you know, I know that. I want to see this house today. I want to see that house today. I got 10 houses. I want to, you know, when you, so I know it's a lot. And so it is important that, that, um, you feel comfortable and that you feel like, um, your realtor um, or your agent has your best interest at heart and is trying to get you in, not just sell you a house, but Mm -hmm. get you as close to, as possible to what you want. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, 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 I know for, for as far as the home, but also for agents, I'll never forget talking to Julius, y'all. Let me tell y'all, I was going to go with an unknown brokerage or whatnot, right? I'm not going to say their name on camera, but I'll never forget Julius. This I'll never forget this probably long I live. His exact words is Brandon. Would you rather just be in a number or would you want to be, be with someone who, who knows you? And the, the type of service they talk about giving his customers, he'll give it to the agents here. So once again, if you're an agent in the Cleveland area, you're looking to come to a brokerage, come on down the dream team because you're not just a number here. You're actually part of a family. I think how many agents we, 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 we're at right now? 
We're about uh, 16 now. 16, 16 yeah, that's now. Dope. That's 16 dope. agents, y'all. And once again, there's never going to be a moment where it won't be someone here to help you, guide you. I think Julie's been to every, every listen to point I had this far and whatnot. I don't know how many brokers actually do that to make sure that you're that you're doing what needs to be done and they and that you're comfortable also because I ain't gonna lie, my first couple months I was kinda nervous. I'm like, oh man, I don't know what to say. But he was there to help me along the way and I really was shaking, you never lie. I was over there. I was like Eminem eight miles. And you know what I'm saying? Then I was over here just uh, uh freaking out. But I said that to say is that the the, the right. service that you get right. customer, I know you give to your agents, and I want to tell you I appreciate that, and I want to tell you thank you. So come to drink team on some Suge Knight type stuff, you know. Yeah, because yeah. dinner is always on branding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. We be like, oh, we know you close. Yeah, dinner's on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, you know what? I, I stopped posting one when I when I when I saw the house, y'all, because yeah. as soon as I do, they're like, okay, you close. Dinner's on. Dinner's on me. You know how some people only buy from the price of me? We don't do that with Brandon Payne. Oh, this sounds good. This right. look good. We don't say, oh, this is no, good. I got, I got to stop posting now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep paying, man. Just keep paying. Right now, my money. It's a business fish. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know what, though? I will give you this. And really, I'll give it to you because I already know it's not Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> but I will give you this. What I will say is, you are not your average agent. Amen. And that comes from not being with it your average it. broker. That's he right. Always, it does not matter who <laughs> is around or what they actually sell or do in real life. Brandy is going to invite them to join the dream team. <laughs> but he actually no loves his life. What, what I no know to be what. true is, at I'll least Brandy will get them through the door. Julius actually sits down, figures out your real situation, <laughs> what you actually want to do, make sure that you can pass the test. Um, and not only just pass like the book test, because once you get to be a realtor, we all know that's a test of patience, it's a test of time, it's a that's test true. of perseverance. Um, so he makes sure you're passing that test as well. And not just you, but your clients. And like Brandon said, they're actual family. It's a team. Uh, but the part of the team, like he said, I don't work or Brandon doesn't work for me, he works with me. Um, it's a collaborative effort between the whole team. So if you are looking to even almost dip your baby toe in the pool of real estate, this will be the place to do it. If I ever, which I might, decide to do uh -oh. it, I would come, come to on. Dream Team only because, on. even though Brandon's a nightmare, <laughs> um, I definitely The honor is working with me, you know, you know? <laughs> The jury's still out. <laughs> but before we bang that gavel, y'all, seriously, um, real estate in itself is a wealth vehicle. Yeah. Not only owning it, but being able to sell it. There's so much that you could do to diversify your funds and your income when it comes to having extra commission, extra time on your hands, freedom of time, and the ability to do it whether you're in a city or state or not. Um, we talked about different ways to market your business and we only touched on the surface of that right but there's different ways to market your real estate business it's different ways to manage that team and work together so in the event that you're not available you will have a team and a real support system here that is different from um who knows we're, i can't even tell you their names because it's really not important um but there's actually like a family savage. here no 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 you know shout out to y'all but if you want the best come here you know if not we wish you the second best because this is the best but um if you know for sure that you want to jump start your journey and cut through a lot of that red line and headaches this is the place you want to be. Mm -hmm. And Brandon only sometimes works. Don't worry, I'll have him on the pull up a lot of the time. So he'll be out your way for the most of it. But we'll catch y'all at the closing table. This is, this is where it all goes down. Yes. You sign your paper, you collect your check, and then you bring it on to me, and I'll help you out to do a little bit different with yeah. that. But um, thank you so much. Yes, they have everything covered. So I, I, I got a everything question before, before we close out. What are three things you want someone to get from the interview day? Because we want, like she, she said, we went over a couple things, but okay. three things you want someone to pull out of the interview to say, okay, I listened to Mr. Cartwright and I got these three things right here. And I'm about to pick up the phone and call. Right well, now. hopefully, mm -hmm. I hopefully they were in just enlightened by everything that we talked about because we talked about a lot of different mm -hmm. scenarios and, and and so hopefully they were enlightened to raise the consciousness level about business, home ownership, whatever mm -hmm. it happens to be. So that would be one. Uh, the second thing is, is to stay connected to pieces like this because your network determines your net worth. So, mm -hmm. you know, show me your five closest friends. I'll show you your future. I'll show you your net worth. 
based on the people that you keep around you. So mm -hmm. being empowered by something like this is critical. And then the last thing I would say, get in the game, get into real estate, either own it, sell it, do whatever, but mm -hmm. you got to get in the game. You got to touch a piece of real estate because they ain't making no more land. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't, you can't the clone that. Yeah. You can't do anything else. And you can pretty much drop the mic on that because <laughs> they, that's yeah. the real estate. Get in the game, mm -hmm. you know, try to own something, be an investor, be a homeowner, or get involved with selling it. So that's what I hope they get out of this. Listen, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't close it better than that. No. So how, 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 how can the people get in touch with you? Where how can people car right for uh do car wheels for car right? How can they, <laughs> they can just dial my phone number 216-990-1501. Just call me. You ain't gotta email me, you gotta go to social media, you can just call me. Call you now. straight up. Oh, that's 24 that. 7. That's gangster right there. You can go out there, all right. <laughs> Don't blow the phone up, y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I, I want to, once again, I want to thank you for tonight because I know you're a busy man. You took time out to speak with us tonight, so we sure. thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, once again, I know we will we're going to come part two because we know the initiative now is 100 uh -huh. a month, y'all. Mm -hmm. 100 a month. And I think it we can, can do that. It can be done. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's a cool. reasonable, oh, yeah. reasonable number. And we can yeah. do it. So part two coming soon. <laughs> And once again, like uh, Dave Shan said all the time, we got to pay some bills first. <laughs> and I do want to pay to, uh, say a couple things. I want, I want to thank you guys once again for you guys' awesome support because we're, at, I think, what, 2,300 yeah, subscribers now? Yeah. You got every time we get up there, y'all just keep making, running, running it up, running it up. And we yeah. appreciate that, y'all. We thank y'all because y'all show up every week. Every and uh, time. every time we put episodes down, we get uh, we get no views. So we appreciate it. So we know what we're dropping is actually valuable content that you guys want to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need you guys supporting this. So we need you guys to now, with you guys viewing it, share it. Leave yes. a comment. Like it. And all that good stuff. And then also, guys, you guys don't know, we also will have, if you can't view the video, we also have the audio. If you go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we're on Google Podcasts, too. So that way, when you jog in the morning, listen to us in the morning, yeah. you know, and at night, you know. Listen to these jokes. It's, 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 these exactly. Right. Excuse Keita, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Everything else is still good information. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> you got it. Right, 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 I got it. I was about to end it out. <laughs> we just I got to be a referee. Yeah, you got I, I got to be a referee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you remind me how to funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But we, but we do, we do want to thank you guys, and uh, we just want to tell you guys thank you, and uh, we will see you guys soon. Oh, I'm sorry, and the last thing, February 13th, guys, come out. Uh, we are having the dating game for entrepreneurs. It's going to be a dope uh, setting. We're yes. going to be the four bistro. Uh, the key is going to be dropping that wine to get y'all drunk, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and then also... Uh, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so really? much fun. Uh, we're having... Stony in the city. Yes, she's gonna be our host. Yes. Yeah, host. My loud radio, radio. Stony in the wow. city. Mm -hmm. So y'all already know it's gonna be dope. That's it's gonna be a up. fun mm -hmm. event. Gonna We're gonna laugh event. all night. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna be entrepreneurs there. So get talk, network. Yep. You know, meet somebody new. You might find your bae. Yeah, exactly. Right. But it's not just for singles. It's for no. couples because it's just going to be one big ass good time. That's so, right. February 13th at the 4 Bistro and Wine Bar. Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. Before before Valentine's Day, get your laughs in. Have some fun. Get it started. Something different on top yes. of that. Something and good. that's the kickoff to my birthday, February 16th. 216. 216. Cleveland girl. <laughs> But no, seriously, guys, make sure y'all show up. And this will be the kickoff to All-Star Week here in Cleveland oh, yeah, this nice. year. So make sure y'all come and pull up on us. Y'all know it's always a great time. And what's it's something different to do. Everybody is tired of that tired mm -hmm. dinner and a movie day. We're over it. It's going to be Super Bowl Sunday anyways. Let's get it kicked off before you head to some other stuff. Get you going. Make sure you position yourself to get in the right rooms and have the right kind of conversations so that you're not just watching us or hearing mm. us, but you're actually participating in these types of conversations with the same people that y'all see every week. Mm. Y'all watch twice a week and the whole episode, too, not just pieces and parts. You guys, we love you guys because you guys stay t connected, stay tuned yeah. in. Wow, so good. all of the questions that you guys have or might have that mm -hmm. we forget to ask, this is the perfect time to come out and finish those conversations or even continue them. Even if we don't finish them, we continue them, we learn more, we grow more, and we continue to build together. 
and be one of those 100 that we get. So yeah. y'all can get this property. <laughs> that's our wealth that's movement what we going. Call we keep need to keep it going. Yes. I like yes. that. Keep it 100. Join the 100. Yes. Woo-hoo. Join the 100. Yes. Man, my marketing is, is playing yes. off, Julius. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, that's that dumb. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can't get like your killer, but you know what? T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Well, I got out there on point. Right off the top, that boy cold. That boy, that boy cold. You know the world. You know the world. But we really do thank y'all. We can't say it enough, though. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye, Bye y'all. <laughs> That was funny. That was good. For real.